And, uh, You're looking I'm good. lovely this and morning. You? How's your weekend? I mean, the weekend is just starting, mm -hmm. but it's great. Mm -hmm. I'm in the studio, so that's fantastic already. Great to have you. Yeah, thank you. All right, and that's it on Entrepreneur Spotlights. Thank you for staying with us on the weekend show. You're now watching the climate chat segment of the weekend show, and I welcome you to the very first episode and say thank you once again for joining. The climate chat will weekly look at issues affecting um, climate um, the communities you know in Nigeria as per climate disasters and how this affects gender inequalities or how it expands inequalities across the board. And this morning, as we look forward to celebrating International Day of the Girl Child, we'll be taking a very quick look at how flooding has impacted the Nigerian girl child across several communities in Nigeria. According to Malala Fund, um, it is estimated that by 2025, 12.5 million children, girl child, will be out of school as a result of flooding. Now, joining me to have the conversation very quickly this morning is Jennifer Abomge, and she'll be speaking to us very quickly about, you know, how flooding impacts the Nigerian girl child in communities across Nigeria. Good morning, Jennifer. All right, I'm quite excited to have you. And it would be great if you could kindly unmute, you know, and uh, as we start this conversation, I really just want you to talk to us this morning about if climate, we keep saying the Nigerian girl child, but there are also boys living in these communities. Would you say that, as someone who has worked in many of these communities, would you say that climate affects the Nigerian girl child differently from the boy child? Thank you very much, Zainab. Um, thank you for having me. Um, over the years, we've worked with these communities, and I, I tell you that um, climate change affects people disproportionately. And um, the girl child is one of the uh, the group that climate change has impacted so much negatively. Um, the effect of climate change on the girl child has spread so much that it affects them socially. It affects them even um, their education. Um, say, for instance, um, they're, 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 they're flooding around everywhere. And, um, you know, as a girl child born into a home in Nigeria, you already have a lot of responsibility for just being a girl child. So um, climate change just um, adds to the number of responsibilities you have as a girl child. Um, it is the girl's child responsibility to uh, help the mother um, in cases of um, climate disasters such as flooding. Um, it is a, it is it is already known as a responsibility for the girl child to to see to it that um, the other members of the family are able to um, get relief materials or are able to escape the flooding because it is the girl child's responsibility by setting um, to ensure that there's food to ensure there's firewood to ensure there's clean water and um, also there are so many impacts that the girl child face and then. We talk about her hygiene in the in the face of disasters mm. such as flooding and drought and other things, and um, the list goes on and on and on and on. So there are so many impacts the girl child faces as a result of climate change. Allow me to cut in there and very quickly ask you: you know, in some of these communities that you have worked in, can you give a very classical example of how um, flooding can radically change a girl's life? Just one, you know, cogent example. Okay. Okay, let's say for instance, um in this season, um there's climate change, there's flooding, and in most of these communities, um, most of them have to evacuate their homes. And um why they are evacuating, um, let me put it to you that a girl might be menstruating, she may just begin her circle. And in the face of um this whole disaster, um the family is not really thinking about her menstrual hygiene. No one thinks about the water she's going to use to clean up. No one thinks about the, the sanitary pad she's going to use. So it is now her responsibility on her own to take care of herself by alone without getting to even bother people about her menstrual hygiene or so. Also, um, uh, in the Oh, 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 all right, that, that, that's, very, that's very important, an important point there. And as we leave, I would like you to also talk to us um, about the solutions, right? Governments regularly intervenes in many of these communities. Would you say that their interventions cover the girl child or they need to do more for some of these communities? Okay, so the government is actually trying. They are doing what they can. But um, 
uh, part of our advocacy is if the government will begin to look at um, climate solution designs to be more gender responsive, because um, there are very there are very little or no women that are involved in the decision making for climate crisis. So when this happens, it is very difficult to future in the needs of the women or the girl child when these designs are being made, because most of these camps that they set up for uh, in displaced people, they are not gender responsive and they do not take into cognizance um, mm. issues that may affect the girl child. girl child. So the government will actually do more by including women in the design of these policies and design of um, these solutions so that the girl child can also be captured and issues that will be responsive to gender can be captured in, this, in, in these decisions. Thank you so much for joining us this morning, Jennifer Abomge. All I hear you say is the need for gender responsive solutions and policies in intervening in flooded communities across Nigeria. And I think that's very important because it's even been estimated that every time you ensure that a girl child is educated and not affected by climate disasters, you improve the ability of that country to respond to climate disasters by 3.2 percent and that's an important point and we will be leaving it today thank you so much once again for joining us jennifer bonge thank you for having me all right and that's how much we can take on climate chat this week join us next week for yet another exciting conversation about how climate disasters you know expands gender equality across the country i am zainab Aditola. see you next week <laughs>